Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. It's episode 35 of Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio, the only traditional martial arts podcast now served up twice a week. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also Whistlecake's founder. And here at Whistlecake, we make the world's best sparring gear and some great apparel and accessories for traditional martial artists. I'd like to welcome new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. Don't forget, you can find all of our past podcast episodes, show notes for this one, and a lot more at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests on the show. Listeners may notice that my voice sounds a little bit different, and yes, I am sick. Despite 14 hours in bed last night, I still feel terribly, but I made a commitment to all of you to making sure that this show comes out, this second show of the week comes out every Thursday, and it is now Wednesday, past the point in time where I really uh, can push it back anymore, so I'm giving you an episode. I hope it comes out okay, and if it doesn't, then we're going to blame the little bugs floating around inside my body, making me feel terribly. I want to thank everyone for the feedback that they sent in on last week's episode, the first, uh, we'll call it, attempt at a non-interview show. I wasn't terribly happy with it. I thought it could have been better, and so I supplied a lot of my own feedback. But I actually got a lot better feedback from all of you, a lot more positive response than I expected, so thank you. Let's jump into it. By now, some of you have probably seen the piece we put out on social media about the organization Kids Kicking Cancer, and this just popped up in a random search on Google News for martial arts stuff, and actually the news article was from Israel, and it's an organization, it's a nonprofit that has, I think, five locations in the United States, four internationally, and their purpose is to teach martial arts to children with cancer. And that sounds kind of hokey, I know, but I dug into it a little bit. And it's actually a really neat organization, at least the way they present themselves. The whole idea is that this group works with kids in a no-fee setup. None of these kids ever have to pay for the services. And they've got strong ties into hospitals. Um, and if I remember correctly, the the places they're teaching are actually in hospitals. And they're not just teaching kids martial arts, but they're they're teaching some of the the stuff that we associate with martial arts that's not directly striking and whatnot, the the breathing, the meditation, stuff like that. And this all came from a gentleman who lost his, I think, two-year-old son to leukemia uh, back in 99. And so he started this organization. Uh, he has a black belt in uh, a Korean martial artist, not Taekwondo. Uh, but I'm going to have the links to all this stuff over on the website. And i just like you to check it out. And I've already reached out to the organization, and they've agreed we're going to have this gentleman on as a guest, because I want to hear more about his story. I want to hear more about what brought him into doing this. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to say that I'm donating to this group. Uh, I do want to learn more, and I would expect the same of you. But my hope is that this is what it claims to be. And if so, it's something that I want to put whistle kicks efforts behind because I don't know about you, but I've known some people with cancer. Um, I've known some kids with cancer and there's nothing worse than a sick kid. It's, it's, it, it shouldn't happen. Uh, and I think we all know as martial artists, the benefits that martial arts can bring to us. And if we can, help some some kids that aren't feeling so great to feel empowered and to make their time with this illness easier then I think we all should do what we can to make that happen but like I said I'm gonna have that guy on um, this gentleman who founded the organization you will absolutely know when it's there because you're listening to the podcast so uh, just have to confirm some dates and that's it. And if you're not getting the newsletter, that's how you would know when that episode is going to come out. That's the only time that we generally announce upcoming guests. Once in a while, we'll do something on the private Facebook group, which 
honestly, I, I don't know that I've ever talked about that. You're all welcome to join that. If you search for Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio on Facebook, we have a closed group where we have some discussion with the guests. Sometimes they will jump in and join the group, uh, and it's a lot of fun. So it's not super active. You're not going to see it fill up your Facebook feed, but you're all welcome to jump in there. And if you didn't check out Monday's episode with Mr. Richard Osborne, you should definitely make time for that. Um, I think the thing that struck me most about Monday's episode was how strongly tied to competition Mr. Osborne is. And if you've listened to that ed- that episode, you know what I'm talking about. This man grew up competing and traveled all over the Midwest competing, and now he runs a tournament, he runs a school... Um, he's still competing, his students are competing, and I don't know too many people who have spent that much time in their martial arts career as competitors. For a lot of people, they burn out, and this guy just, he loves competition, and and I love competition. I love seeing what it does for people, so uh, go check that interview out. That's episode 34, and let us know what you think. If you remember from last week, we had a movie pick, and we're going to do that every week, at least until run out of great movies to share. Uh, hopefully that will never happen. But as I was digging around, I realized that one of the movies that comes up as a recommendation that I bump into a lot of people that haven't seen it is It Man. And if you haven't seen It Man, first off, it's on Netflix for streaming. And it's this kind of loose biography of a guy from China named Yip Man, who not only was he Bruce Lee's Wing Chun instructor, but he's sort of credited with being the the guy that helped Wing Chun spread worldwide. And it's a great, great movie. Donnie Yen is a star. Who, he's a tremendous martial artist, wonderful actor. And the movie's just fun. Um, it's one of those movies that even though it's subtitled, it doesn't take away. I personally, I, I hate subtitles. The first subtitled movie I was able to sit through was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. But this one, you don't even notice it because there's so much action. And most of the time when there isn't the action, you can just follow what's going on because it's not super dramatic, super involved acting. Like I said, fight scenes are great. If you haven't checked it out, you owe it to yourself. Check it out and let us know what you think in the comments or on social media. One of the things that we try to put out a lot on social media is positivity. We try to share motivational quotes and stories and things like that, and they're actually very well received. So hopefully you're not in the minority that that doesn't like that, but if you are, tough, because we're going to keep doing it. But as I was putting together this show, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was this social media piece that we put out uh, last week that was really accepted well, and there's a story that I found that kind of ties into it. And I'm going to read this and and many of you will have heard this. It's really short. A young boy traveled across Japan to the school of a famous martial artist. When he arrived at the dojo, he was given an audience with the sensei. What do you wish for me? The master of the Zen martial arts Academy asked. I wish to be your student and become the finest karateka in the land. The boy said, how long must I train? 10 years, at least the master replied. 10 years is a long time. Said the boy. What if I study twice as hard as all your other students? Twenty years, replied the master. Twenty years? What if I practice day and night with all of my effort? Thirty years, was the master's reply. How is it that every time I tell you I will work harder, you tell me that it will take longer, said the boy. The answer is clear. When you have one eye fixed upon your destination, there is only one eye left with which to find the way. So, like I said, many of you have probably heard that story, that anecdote before fable. That's probably a better word for it. I'm not going to tell you what to take away from it because I think that that's on you. But the social media piece that we put out there was this, um, we do these motivational posters. You know, you've all seen those and a lot of them have quotes and some of them are quotes that we take from others. Some of them are quotes that I come up with myself. And they're usually things that I find myself saying when I'm running a seminar or I'm teaching a class or something. And this particular one says, martial arts is one of those rare pursuits that will give back exactly and only what you put in. And I'll leave it 
to you to draw the correlation between the story that I read and that quote, and maybe you don't even see a tie. Personally, I do. I wanted to explain where that came from. Now, first off, that quote came out of my own head. If somebody else has said that before, I'm sure someone has, I didn't hear it. I'm not trying to steal credit. I found myself saying that quite a bit over the last six months when I was talking to people that were not involved in martial arts. See, one of the things that's been interesting about Whistlekick and about doing this podcast is that it gives me a lot of exposure to people that don't train in martial arts that have tied to me either personally on Facebook or just kind of out in the world. People want to know, hey, what's going on with you? And so they'll talk to me about martial arts and, and should they train martial arts? Should their kids get into martial arts? And I found myself saying this, martial arts is one of the rare pursuits that will give back exactly and only what you put in. And that sounds like it could be a negative, and I suppose it could be. But for me, when I was growing up, anybody that knew me knew I was a nerd. And I wasn't just a nerd, I was the nerd. Most schools have one nerd, that kid that's just a complete outcast because everyone perceives them to be smarter than them. And I did well in school, but I was smaller. I did martial arts. I was awkward at team sports. And so I found that the more I dedicated myself to martial arts, the more I got back out of it. I didn't find the same thing with really anything else. If You know, I, I thought about playing basketball. And so I spent one summer really getting as good as I could playing basketball. And I was a good shot, but I was still 5'6 and 130 pounds and nobody wanted to pass me the ball. And it didn't matter how good of a shot I was. I wasn't going to get anything more out of playing basketball. But with martial arts, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. If I put effort in, I'm going to get results back. Now, some might say, you know, you can spend all day in the dojo and not get anything out of it. And when I say dojo, I don't mean, you know, just karate, please. I hope no one's thinking I'm, I'm picking on Japanese martial arts and excluding something else. It's we, we said dojo in the story, so that's what popped into my head. Sure, you can put a lot of time in without effort, but really the heart of, of what I'm trying to say here with this quote and, and the sentiment behind it is about your effort, your intent. And you can dedicate yourself to a lot of things. But martial arts is one of the few where everything you put in, you get back. And that's what I love about it. And I bet for a lot of people listening, that's what you love about it, whether or not you've articulated it this way. So I'm going to put that image up on the show notes. Feel free to steal it, share it, repost it, quote it. I don't care. I love credit, but if you don't give credit, that's fine because what's the goal here? The goal here is to get more people training. The more people doing martial arts, I genuinely believe, the better the world will be. So anything you do in that direction, I'm going to support it. So that is it for today. This is about the length of the show that I want to do, about 15 minutes or so. So head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for the show notes, the, the links, all the things that we talked about today. And remember, this is episode 35. Please, if you haven't, leave us a review wherever you're getting the show. iTunes is kind of the key one. And don't forget, we've got free apps on Google Play for you Android users and on the App Store for those of you that are using an iPad or an iPhone or even an iPod. So just search for Whistlekick and that should come right up. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.